Okay, so I'm so excited to, I am genuinely excited to introduce Sean because Sean is an HR practice leader and um, it's interesting because he started his journey as an a quality engineer, all right? You can read the blurb and you can also find his details on LinkedIn. So I do encourage you to, to read more about him in LinkedIn. But today, you know, he is leading the uh, HR scene at a global company, manufacturing company. And for those of you who are not, you know, new to Sean, then you would know that Infineon has also come on and they will be coming on again this year because we've got some success stories in terms of, you know, uh, getting people to join uh, Infineon from unsuspected places. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Sean. Yeah. So, um, okay. So I know Sean personally because he's an IO psychologist as well. And so, uh, you know, Infineon is so fortunate to have him as a HR leader there because he can apply many, many areas as well. Not to mention, um, not forgetting that Sean is a very creative and innovation, innovative leader uh, to add to the realm as well. Okay, so um, I think he's got both, you know, the left brain and right brain, you know, skills and capability. Enough talk, Eileen. I'm going to pass you over to Sean because he's going to talk about how to start the conversation with potential employers. All right. So All right. Stop share here. Yeah, so um, let me share my screen. Hmm. And yep. Let me know if you can see my screen already. Very nice. I can. Okay. So great. I turn coffee into chips. <laughs> that's that's really what my company does actually. Uh, and I'll just just jump straight in since the introduction has already done. That is our vision, of course, to make life easier, greener, safer, and greener, and uh, semiconductor solutions. So yes, we manufacture chips. Uh, in fact, we provide solutions. So that is in a nutshell. I think uh, solutioning is always part of Infineon. Uh, so uh, we work with the whole supply chain. In fact, um, in the whole Asia Pacific, we have the full fledge of uh, 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 manufacturing. The, we call it the front end, which is make, making the, the, the wafer, you know, like the wafer chips, the wafer, the, the silver round circle thing that you see to the programming, to the design, to the packaging, to the black squares, and uh, to the shipment. So in whole of Asia, it's a really a global supply chain, global lighthouse supply chain um, for this entire semiconductor solution, including sales and marketing, R&D and logistics. So Asia is a very, very important region for Infineon. And, and that's why we, are, we have our presence here very, very big. So about us, we are ready, uh, or well, not, not we are ready from when we acquired Cyprus, uh, we are the top 10 semiconductor companies in the world. So top 10 semiconductor companies, we are close to above 50,000 employees and growing. Um, so leading player in automotive. So BMW cars, all the cars, continental cars, even Korean cars has our chips in them. We have uh, power management chips. We have uh, sensor chips. And nowadays we, we talk about IoT. So IoT chips, security chips, we have this whole gamut of uh, uh, products and semiconductor, it's really growing because um, it is becoming uh, essential in every electronic devices, from phones to even your passports and even to some currencies, imagine. And they are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So you actually don't know that it exists, but they exist. So <laughs> just to let you, actually it's actually quite frightening how this whole evolution is growing and how AI is coming to play with this. So that's why they say semiconductor is the new oil, if you read somewhere. <laughs> yeah. So it is, it is growing very fast. Um, we have grown tremendously, 9% revenue growth year on year uh, and more. Um, and then 19% for segment, each of our segment, product segments. And of course, uh, we investment to sales ratio of 13%. So this is, this is how we are. Uh, as a global organization, I'm just going to show you all um, how, what is our growth. And, and so this is where we here want to bring solutions in digitalization and electrification. Very interesting, right? Very interesting. Our revenue segments is, is really diverse. So again, not just maybe like some of our competitors, we just focus on memory solutions or we just focus on, on you know, uh, uh, maybe a uh, uh, consumer, right? 
we are very, very diverse. And we have these four different revenue by segments. Of course, automotive with all the cars in the world, definitely we have that's the largest of our market share. Uh, we see connected secure systems growing tremendously in the last one year, actually. And you can see it's true that we are the new oil. As you can see, the, the revenue growth, uh, 11 billion euro uh, in the last year. So we are likely to project the same for this financial year as well. And of course, the revenue by uh, product category is increasingly growing. And uh, what is very interesting, you can see maybe on the bottom right is power semiconductors. So this, and of course, also uh, embedded control and connectivity. So these two are new, very, uh, I would say the products are very, very new in, in, in the whole ecosystem, whereby we see now semiconductors is no more like a, you have that in your memory, I see so your hard disk and all of that, or in your PCs, consumers, we see this functioning, playing the AI role, playing the security role, uh, and powering devices and all of that. Your power management system in automotive cars, uh, and even the automotive, uh, in even all those cars, railways, all the power management are all actually run by uh, IC chips right now. So just speaking about Singapore itself, 2003 employees across diverse functions, regional sales and marketing sits here. Uh, our central functions, which is uh, HR, um, finance, our logistics, regional central function sits here. Uh, we have a, a first co innovation space. Let me talk about this. So, here we have a, a real incubation space here to help organizations uh, incubate and bring their products from IP to commercialization. So, very unique. Uh, I think one of in all of Infineon globally is situated in Singapore. So, we have uh, probably about four to five vendors, uh, four to five companies actually is uh, in the same office I, as I am in, the, in Kalang, right? So, so they sit here and we partner. Then of course, uh, our key R&D competency hub is here. Uh, and, and of course, we have our global competency hub for testing. So we have a back-end factory that does assembly and packaging to make. So that means if you have the wafer fat, you have LEDs and you have maybe the black part, which is the assembly of all the whole chip, they do the testing for the back-end over here. And of course, we ship uh, all our products from Asia, from Singapore, out. So uh, really a global logistic hub from here to Singapore. So every, um, so the whole region, all the chips come through Singapore, get tested, and it ships up from Singapore. So actually a very, very um, integrated kind of system uh, that we have in Asia. And I can speak maybe just very quick one. So we have our wafer fats being produced really in, um, I mean, a wafer fat is maybe like our competitors in Singapore where you have global boundaries, you have micro and all that, but we have that in Kulin. Then it comes down to Malacca for assembly. Then it comes down to Singapore for test and then Singapore ships that out. So, so you can see the whole global supply chain really in Asia. And of course our sales and marketing covers from up to Korea and in India, uh, we have a full IT team so the IT in terms of uh, connected uh, security and systems, uh, most of it, the R&D is all done in India. Yes. So that's why you see behind me the screen, it's the whole Asia map. <laughs> yeah. So you, you can see we, are, we, we, we play a very, very important role. So that, that is really all uh, uh, my sales speech about my organization. Now let's go right in. Uh, I believe this is very familiar to Eileen, right? Eileen? Uh, Definitely. I, yes, yes, we covered this at your last speech. So Sean is a returning speaker, but there are more that he will be diving into. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so I covered these five things uh, about uh, how to prepare yourself and, and how, how do we uh, to stay on course and really in the, I think last year, I think in February sometime. So, but really this topic that she gave me this time around was really so uh, coincidentally connected to remain connected, which is really about networking. And you can see that um, this is about today's topic. And again, keep your questions coming. And, and I think this is very important because then I can answer these questions uh, that I see from the audience as well and provide you uh, what, what does corporate or, or how does uh, people like me, like that recruiting, uh, um, able to handle all of this. So networking, three areas over down here, professional and industry sectors, 
past and present colleagues, family and friends. Some of you have listed some of this in the chat earlier. So I'm very happy that, that you guys have the same like-minded thinking. All right. So before we come to the first topic, we run the first poll, right? We have to run the first poll. Elin, uh, shall we run the first poll? Yeah, let's do that. Sure. Let's do that. Okay. Oops. Let's see. All right. Oh. Just give me a minute. I think sure. I'm having some issue with... So, uh, so the first, first question is actually, um, have you... Maybe you all can think about this before you answer that, right? Have you attended any professional or industry sector, either a virtual or physical event in the past year or past years? That is the question, right? Yeah, I think um, maybe we'll just move on first. I'm sure, no problem. Okay, no worries. With this one. Okay, oh, let's, let's, let's move. Uh, and and uh, basically, I just want to hear you guys telling me this because this is yeah. very important, right? Right? Yeah. So professionals and industry sector, I think this is very interesting, right? Why, why do I say that? Because I think most importantly, there are a few things that you need to know. Firstly, sometimes you need to sign up for these events. Sometimes you are being called up. And so then this bubble comes into your mind, right? There is a company event coming up. Should I attend? Or is there a professional event coming? Should I attend? Or is, is there like an industry sector? Last month, or is it this month, we hosted a Singapore Semiconductor Industry Association event, right? We, we, we were in, in that event. So should you attend or should you not, right? So, and then in your mind, you say, okay, uh, yeah, I got to go again. I got to dress up. I got to, you know, be there, right? Should, is it really necessary? So my question, my answer is this, right? First thing, number one, understand the industry. Because it is through these events that you understand the industry. You need to know the landscape as well. So the landscape, what I mean by the landscape is where is, for example, semiconductor or healthcare. I mean, healthcare, you all know what the landscape is in Singapore, right? That means what is happening in Singapore terms? Is there a race for talent? Is there a diminishing in, in talent hiring? Where is the crowd going to? What skills is needed? What, I'm giving you all questions because I want you all to think, right? What, what do I need to know? All these are very important because it builds up, right? It builds up because when you attend and, and you connect with people in networking, you need to be in the know of such questions and you must have answers and you must be ready. So you need to study and know how is, what is happening around the recruitment space, right? A very, very good example. Maybe two years ago or one year ago, we see a huge rush of talent for IT. We see a dip this year actually in IT. It's still high but we see a dip and we see people, you know, are still applying and looking. So, so then question, huh? if, if you see a dip, that means companies probably are more selective in this hiring. Because if they only have one space instead of two space, they will choose better candidates. So you need to have good, this in mind. A good Very important. leading indicator. Yes, yes, yes. So this is important. And, and in this space, you need to also, when you attend such events, you need to know the companies participating or the company that's running event and what are they advertising or are they looking up right now? So if you know this, you actually have an advantage because you know that there are people in that virtual space or people in that event that will be looking out for people or looking for those functional skill sets. So you need 
to be prepared. <laughs> that comes to my next bubble. <laughs> what should I prepare, right? So, so firstly, to prepare, you need to go to this company's website and read the job description so that you know exactly what skills, what competencies are needed, right? With the skills and competencies you know, you actually can craft your position. But never lie, eh? because now there are, there are more technical tests for all this. <laughs> right? so, 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 so this is important. It also tells you that maybe I need to upskill myself. I need to um, take certain WSQ courses. I need to read up more on this particular area. I need to uh, maybe take a short course. I need to learn more about technology. I need to be in the know of that space. So that's how you prepare. You need to be ready, as, as I think just now, uh, Eileen shared that so as well. You need to prepare. There was a question on uh, should I prepare or not prepare, right? When you go into that networking. So you need to be interview ready and prepare for conversational changes, right? And if you are even better, you are, if you are being called up to company events, means actually someone has already selected you somewhat from a desktop already to actually eyeball you or you are you considered as the first shortlist being done already. So please, the more, especially when you receive a direct call, don't turn it, don't it, turn it down. You're wasting a huge opportunity here, right? And of course, if you go, then the next question, next big question is, what should I not ask? That's a good one, yeah. We have we always prepare what to ask. <laughs> what 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 should I not ask? Right? Of course, yeah. maybe you 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 want to find out about the culture and you say, uh, how is it working with this person? So that's not <laughs> shouldn't shouldn't be us asking about you know uh, uh things that are sensitive, you know. Um, I mean, I give you an example like like everybody used to use maybe one month ago, everybody said war for talent. But after something happened, people said race for talent. People don't, so we internally change. We don't use the word war for talent anymore because it's sensitive. We use race for talent. So are you racing? And when you race, make sure you ask the right questions and what should I not ask? So again, don't try not to ask about uh, cultural topics. And I think most importantly, it's you need to listen and um, ask questions that would actually lead the answers from the hiring managers and answer accurately because sometimes they are sometimes they ask specific questions and want you to answer correctly. So those are more important than asking questions. That is a very, very important tip because if you don't answer those questions accurately, you actually lose your next chance. <laughs> so, so this is, so more so when you're invited to a network event, mm. answer the questions rather than ask questions. Okay. We, um, I just thought I'd let you know there are more people answering no than yes. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, and... so uh, I think this is important. And so mm. you need to attend more professional industry so that you know what is happening in the market. I think this is where everybody thinks that your skill sets or competencies are ready for the now or the, the jobs right now because it's really different. I give you an example, like our engineering um, uh, people that come on in, they last time it used to be like megatronics or electrical engineering or electronics engineering. Now we expect them to have also understand programming languages or scripts as part of the hybrid skill sets. So you see how this has all evolved. So what you have applied your job five years ago, three years ago, the same job may have different functional skill sets right now. Also very, very important. So to know this, you need to go to such events. You need to find out what organizations are looking for because it changes year on year. And, and Eileen would know this, 10 years ago, HR functions differently from how the HR functions now. 
Maybe yep. HR 10 years ago would, hey, what is my leave records? Huh? <laughs> but now, you guys actually take ownership of your leave records. Hiring managers don't even care about that. The systems actually trigger the hiring. So then that, that has all changed because then now your managers actually ask you, hey, can you plan your leave? It's different. So you see just a simple task like this, how it evolves through the times. And, and this, is, this is how this all has changed. Maybe let's go to the next one. Let's run the next poll. Okay. All right. Do you often connect with the people, right? Yes. I've just launched. So the choices are... So, how, so the question is, how often do you connect with people you know in the company that is hiring? So basically your target employer. So how often do you connect with the people who's working there? So is it all the time? Is it sometimes? Is it not always? Or... Not sure. Never thought of it. <laughs> okay, I've shared, I'm sharing the results right now. So yep. everybody should be able to see. Not always, right? Mm. I, I saw that. Yeah. Do you know that that is your secret to finding out the culture of the organization? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is the right way to ask about the culture of the organization that you're applying for without asking the hiring manager directly or the person recruiter that's hiring directly. So if you have past, present colleagues, one question is, hey, did, did you work for that company before? Hey, I saw your LinkedIn. Uh, you work for that. And, and, and I'm sure within your network, you have some people would have worked for companies like this before. Or maybe within that six a degree, <laughs> you have people or friends that has, you know. And, and so that's a good question because... Totally, you don't really need to ask such questions in actually when, the, when you do that interview because you can find that out separately and leave the interview session for the hiring manager or the recruiter to find out more about you, which is all about, the, which is all about getting the job, right? So, yeah. so why do you waste 10 minutes to ask questions like, you know, how is the leadership or, you know, something like that? I'll go to that later. But, but you know, this is where find out from past and present colleagues or within network that's worked before in the, the organization and, and, and find out that because that will give you a good, very, very good sense of the culture of the organization. And here in, in this whole space, you can really actually very, very safely ask, why did you leave? Right? rather than asking, again, the recruiter or, or, or you know, again, the, the, the person that's interviewed, very safely ask. And past and present colleagues, most of the time, are very direct and candid on this. I think um, this, is, this is so true, right? Just get ready because this could be, this is, to me, a common question. So, so you can always ask that question and be prepared to answer when you're being asked, yeah. I yes. totally agree. So, so why, why did you leave? I mean, you can just ask, you know, someone that, you know, who are past and even the present colleagues in your network, hey, how is your organization doing? How is it? How, how is COVID impacting? You, you could ask that very frankly. And uh, they may sometimes tell you, are you, are you, I think better don't, don't join. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> you no, know, I mean, uh, uh, of course. Uh, yes, 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 definitely. Right. I, I got that. I got that before I uh, joined Thomson Reuters. I think that's in, in those day, uh, days and age, you know, basically it was, it, Thomson family has not bought Reuters yet. So it was just entirely known as Reuters. And I remember they were going through a global re -org And yeah, I was advised otherwise, you know, please don't come because there's, bloodbath and stuff like that yeah so you will hear you will hear things like this but sometimes people may not share yes and so you can ask really again how is it working there? So what what Eileen has mentioned earlier right how really is it working there and and they will be very very honest so if you have no choice but really really want to join this top organization that probably is the best in IT or the best in uh, maybe uh, online sales right but culture is horrible and you said 
okay, maybe I really want to join and get this experience. Then you go in with a calculated risk, knowing that you face that. And that is very important because if you are sure about this calculated risk, you know exactly, actually, you actually can plan your career already, how long you want to be there or what do you want to get out of that organization? So you need to be sure about this because this helps you when you network and when you ask about this question, how's he working there? Or maybe sometimes a very common uh, 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 answer would be, hey, actually the organization is good, but you report to this manager, uh, <laughs> so, 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 so then it wants you really, right? And you, you say, but hey, I really want that job. Then okay, calculate the risk. You, you, you take up the job. And sometimes uh, it may be that the company will offer very, very good high salary to you, right? And what is something that you not, are not sure is sometimes you go into this, yes, pays you 20% more, 25% more, maybe even with stock options, but you are actually suffering and losing your hair almost every single day. And then how is it working there? Maybe a good way. Are you full of politics every day? Ding dong, ding dong. Actually, it's not about the work. It's about managing the politics or managing people rather than managing the work. So unless you are a very good chameleon, then <laughs> you can go into the organization and manage all of this. Uh, then you make that calculated risk, right? So if that's the case, then what is the JD coming for, right? Like what is the functional skills for if you have to manage that? So I leave you that thinking. So very interesting, right? And really your past and present colleagues will give you a very, very safe space to ask about the organization. And also very importantly, I use this tactic, uh, uh, even for my personal self, joining an organization to also find out, right? So uh, you can do it even when you're doing interviews or even to find out even before or, or, or do that because this is, this is, this is good, right? Find out, find, out, find out about the organization and very, very safe zone over down here without even uh, damaging your uh, credentials or what they would have ca capture internally if, if, if the organization is actually having a panel interviews and you don't want to say the wrong thing and all of that. So safe zone here, right? We can run the next poll. So the question is, does my family or friends know that I'm looking out for career transition? So all the time, everyone's in the know. <laughs> or sometimes, not always, or not sure. Oh, wow. Sometimes and not always. All right. So that, 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 that's actually very interesting again. Because, I mean, on a hindsight, will your family or friends... I mean, if you talk, linking back to the previous, talking about the culture, will your family or friends will actually not tell you the truth even when to join in another organization? They will definitely tell you the truth. So that is also linking back from the previous one. It is good to get let them know about your career transitions and you moving to organizations because they will tell you absolutely the honest, nothing but the truth, but the truth, right? <laughs> so this is important. And, and sometimes I think we, we, we are very shy, even our own family and friends, you know, uh, you know, what, 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 why should I ask? So this is a story that I want to tell you, how I joined Infineon, right? So um, I, LinkedIn is always very popular and you, you know, when you, you put up LinkedIn, you get prompts, right? To say, you know, who is hiring and that is hiring. So then uh, the, and the prompt came from Infineon, right? So I wasn't sure. So um, frankly, I just asked one of my friends, you know, and I was very happy with my previous job. I was, I was uh, 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 um, you know, very happy and I'm doing very well, right? And, 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 and then, uh, in fact, what I, I asked my friend because there's a job. I said, hey, you, 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 you worked in Infinite before, right? How, how is it uh, uh, working there? So, so then... Uh, I said, then she replied, hey, you better go and join. Like, it's a very good global company. Like, uh, you know, you think twice, like, go and, uh, you know, uh, uh, you should apply for the job or, 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 or whatever, you know. Uh, 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 then I said, are, are you sure? No, I, I think 
I no chance lah, no chance, right? Then she said, hey, actually I know people there. <laughs> right? So, so then she said, uh, I know people there. Then I said, hey, you still working with people? Uh, you still know them? Are you still in contact? Then she said, oh, yes, yes, yes. So then I said, uh, I, yeah, I don't know lah. Anyway, here's my resume. Uh, you just take it lah and, and, and then uh, see whether you have a, a connection or whatever. So that's how I got my job. <laughs> right? You never know. So You never know. You never, you never know. know. Yep. So I yep. actually just, just said, you know, hey, what do you think you work there? How, how was it? So that, you see, when a person that knows the organization, that person will tell you honestly, hey, blah, 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 whatever, 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 whatever. So then that gave me a very positive signal, mm. right? But again, maybe I was maybe not prepared or I said, and don't forget my previous role was group talent management, right? My current role is group talent network. So I'm doing more acquisition job, recruiting job as compared to talent management job over here. So then same thing to the person that interviewed me, I was very blatant and frank. I said, hey, I had my experience in mostly in talent management. Are you sure you want to hire me to this role? <laughs> right? I was very honest to my interviewer. And uh, yes, they, they, they said, okay, we want to hire you, right? Uh, some of your experience are, are really what, but we like your attitude, we like your behavior, we, we like uh, what, and, and I think your, your, your energy and all of that. And, you know, why don't you come on board? So I'm, I'm flourishing now. Right, I'm I'm ready. My third and three and a half years here and uh, doing well. So so that that so then it also has given my 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 manager or my bosses uh, confidence. Right, sometimes it's not hiring a direct fit hundred percent. It's about the transferable skills and the potential skills that you see. Right, so so of course this is a HR role. Right, so that's how I came on board. Right, my team has grow, grown tremendously, and uh, uh, it was really, really exciting. Yeah, so here, uh, I begin to talk to this person, and, and then, right, this connection with family and friends is critical because your con these connections over down here will probably give you a, a, a better advantage in terms of being able to even not just understand the organization but it gives you a better, uh, 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 maybe like for my example, like my case, it gives me certain privilege, right? I jumped, jumped the entire recruitment process and I jumped that really very quickly. So connections within organizations is actually very important. So like referral schemes, most organizations have referral schemes. We have a referral scheme, right? Uh, I'm sure Daniel HSBC has a referral scheme as well, right? Most large organizations have a referral scheme. Not just, not that the referee wants to get more money, <laughs> which organizations actually do pay quite a bit for, 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 for people that refer in. But why this is important? Because organizations has learned the science of social recruitment and they has learned the science of recruiting via people that you know. Because people that you know, and when you recruit people or refer someone that you know, you know that it's like the attitudes and behaviors, they will know that these people will actually fit into the culture of the organization much more. So referral schemes are actually very important. And here within the, the family and friend space, you can ask deeper questions like just now what we talked about, you know, how is the organization, but family and friends will tell you blatantly how is the leadership, the challenges, the difficulties, you know, or, or even the, 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 the nuances that probably you, you don't actually see so on social media or you see it, right? They will tell you the real deal in that organization. They will never lie to you. So, so again, here, family and friends will tell you absolutely by the truth. And here you can ask deeper question, go very deep in to ask about the leadership and they will tell you honestly. All right. So with that, I just want to end. This is my last slide. 
we have lots of presence in social media. You're on the right side, if you scan, you could see all the jobs that Infineon is actually uh, looking out for. We have close to 130 jobs uh, right now. Uh, across Asia Pacific, we have more than 1,000 jobs. Yeah, so you know we are expanding, we are growing. Uh, so should 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 apply apply to that link if you if you Absolutely. feel that yeah yeah I I would say Sean is one HR director who is very who is a people person so he's always very happy to meet people uh go to our YouTube channel because he's got we've got recordings of you know who Infineon is and for everyone who is interested in his deck let me just show you the link where you can download his deck. All right, so it's Sean Lim dash uh, convo. And I had to put that dash convo because if you just enter Sean Lim alone, you will get a copy of his previous deck. <laughs> all right, the okay, deck to okay. his previous talk. Yeah, so all the speakers here have got the um, extension, their name as the extension. So please, um, you can download his deck there. I'll, I'll drop that link in the chat as well. Very, very nice. There's only one quick question. Uh, as you were presenting, the question was, what if I don't know anyone, right, in the target employee, employer company? What if I don't know? So what can I do? Okay, so I think one of the first things that, that you could also uh, uh, look out for, and I remember this um, when I was also, just my example as Infineon, was that I so wanted at that time to check how this organization, so what I did was, uh, I had a friend, it's actually friends, friend, friend, right? So, and, and, and he was uh, actually an ex-employee. So the friend, 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 so three levels here. Um, and, and I asked this friend, hey, you got anybody, you know? And then this friend actually go and say, hey, actually, uh, I'm not very sure, but maybe uh, my other friend knows, right? So, so then I had three levels and, and I made the effort to meet up with the person. I buy that person tea to find out about the organization as an ex employee before I joined, right? Remember, I came from my healthcare. So healthcare, they say uh, sunrise, right? You join manufacturing sunset, right? So I wanted to be very sure how Infineon is as organization before yeah. making that move. That was the first thing you have to, um, you know, address. Manufacturing, yeah. especially Infineon, is expanding. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it, it was crazy because when we did the employer meet and greet, you know, Sean told me we've got like, you know, less than 50 jobs or something like that. But by the time we did that webinar, uh, do join our mailing list because you will get direct invites to, to those sessions. We had over 100, right? Over yeah. 100 openings. They are, it's crazy. So, so definitely not sunset. Um, there's a quick question in the chat asking, directed and for you. Uh, Sean, what are your thoughts on Glassdoor? Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> Glassdoor, Glassdoor um, it's, gives you an overall perspective, but, but nothing meets the words coming from the horse's mouth from your connection, right? Uh, sometimes in written, there's so much we can write, but having the conversation give you the nuance and understanding of whatever topic or theme. Okay, so maybe um, you know, read it for information, but don't don't read it for conclusion, right? Absolutely! Wow, that's so nice. <laughs> code by code. <laughs>